Hey, what's up, guys? Frugal BC coming at you today. I want to talk to you about Jacob Lund Fiskers of Early Retirement Extremes interview on radical personal finance and three takeaways that I took from that interview. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Frugal BC. Hey, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. You can smash it or you can press it really gently. Whatever your preference is, I'm not particular. Today, I want to talk to you guys about an interview that Radical Personal Finance had on its show with Jacob Lund Fisker. He is often considered kind of the father or one of the fathers of the FIRE movement or the financial independence movement. And um, I, I've read his blog a little bit. One of the things that he's been known for is that he lives, he lives extremely frugally, like well beyond what most modern fire folks do. You know, I think Mr. Money Mustache, when he came along and actually Jacob eventually passed the, uh, passed the torch on to him. And there's some similarities, but Mr. Money Mustache lives away, lived away more obtainable lifestyle, I think, for most people and is probably closer to the model that most fire folks follow now, most people who are seeking financial independence. And He's kind of the forebearer of that. He lived in, I think he lived in an RV at one point. Super interesting. And one of the interesting things, too, is that he actually went back to work. So he he quit work, and he quit work. He didn't work for a while, and then he went back into finance for a little bit, and now he's back to being retired. So it was a really interesting interview. I will include a link to it in the description down below because I really think it's worthwhile listening to in its entirety. But I want to talk about three things that I took away that I thought were really interesting from the interview. So one of the first things that he talked about that I didn't really know because I hadn't heard his origin story, he really didn't get into this with the idea of retiring early. That was more a natural consequence of what he wanted to do. So what he actually wanted to do was to, he wanted to spend less and consume less so that he would be taking less resources from the earth, which I thought was really cool. So, so basically it was more about environmentalism and he kind of looked, he, from what he said, he looked around the world and tried to figure out, well, what could an average person spend that would be sustainable world, taking the whole world into account? And that turned out to be about $6,000. So he did everything he could to get close to that spending level. So the natural result, of course, is that he had money left over um, Way, way more money than he needed. So eventually, you know, in a very short amount of time, he found himself to be retired, which is pretty cool. Here's another thing that he said, and it was, it was a small little tiny part of the interview, but I smiled because it's something I've been saying for a long time. The Radical Personal Finance started asking him about, um, which is, by the way, one of my favorite podcasts. Uh, it's funny because I'm very different from him, and I think I see things differently from him. And I don't know why I'm drawing a complete blank on the name of the host. Like, I, I've listened to it all the time, and I just can't think of it. <laughs> but a great, it's a great show. I love listening to it. It always makes me think, and that's why I like it, even though he thinks so differently than me. He always makes me think, and I, I reconsider things, so that's cool. Anyway, he asked him about the 4% rule, and when he thought about that, about the, and the idea is, like, you, if you save 25 times your annual income, you can safely withdraw 4% per year and your portfolio will remain intact. So it'll keep perpetuating itself and never run out. And one of the things he said was, well, you know there's no such thing as a safe withdrawal uh, rate. And that's true. I, I've said this before because everyone says, no, 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 really the safe rate is 3.5 or it's 3.25 or it's 2.5. No, there's no safe rate. There's, it's a, there's safer, you know, obviously the smaller per, you can make that percentage, uh, the safer it will be, but it's never completely safe. We're assuming that the market will continue as it has based on historic returns, but that can change. So, you know, I, I, I don't think you should think of it as safe and unsafe because it's not right. And he's correct in that. Really, there is no, there's no safe withdrawal rate. There's just safer. 4% is kind of considered the sweet spot. It also makes the math really easy. And you can adjust that if you want to make it safer. But we have to get out of this mindset that there is such a thing as a safe withdrawal rate because there really isn't. So it was a good point. I like that one. And one of the other things that what it kind of relates to finance, but it kind of relates to personality, is that he said that we he doesn't feel like we have a society that's 
geared towards his type of personality where he will find a challenge in something and so he'll enjoy it. And then when the challenge runs out, his skill level goes up, the challenge is gone, and he no longer finds it interesting. I found that super interesting because I've always felt like I didn't fit quite in society. Like I'm someone who likes to do a lot of things. Um, people are surprised when they learn all the things that I do. I mean, I'm a YouTuber, blogger, photographer, um, video game player. Oh, that's not a big deal. <laughs> I mean, I've been learning to code. Um, I'm a musician. I play guitar. I write songs. And I'm a journalist for my profession as well as a photographer. Uh, I'm probably forgetting like 10 things. I mean, the list just goes on and people are always so surprised because I have so many different friends that know me from those particular things. Oh, martial arts too. So uh, one of the reasons I like journalism is that it's always allowed me to explore my my interests and I don't really get bored with it. I, I sometimes get bored with the the deadlines and having to kind of being wrapped into a format, you know, that, that, that gets old, I guess, like I have to come up with a cover story almost every week. And so the most interesting story might not be the thing that I have 2000 words to write about. Sometimes it's like something shorter, but it's really interesting. And I, I, it might take a lot of time to get to that. So I totally get what he's saying because our society kind of wants to put you in a career, one single path where you, you know, you do this thing, you master it, and you do that till you're 65 and retire. So one of the benefits for me is that I like the idea that at some point I can just quit and kind of do things my way, and I don't necessarily have to worry about making money. Um, so anyway, those are three really interesting things that I took away from the podcast that really resonated with me. I haven't finished it yet, so there's probably some parts coming up, and maybe I'll do a part two. I think I'm about halfway through it, but that's just from that part. Um, he's a really interesting guy. I think he's really interesting in the fire community because he's so different than most of the people you'll hear. And so I, I highly recommend checking that one out. Like I said, I will leave a link in the description. Um, if I figured out, if, if I don't know if he has it on YouTube, but if he does, I'll put it up on YouTube too. You'll probably have already seen it. So uh, thanks so much. Uh, again, if you can hit that like and subscribe button. I love you to death, and I'll see you next time.